so dear students uh, in fifth module we will study so what are the time varying electric and magnetic waves so how they behave and propagate in the vacuum so in detail we will study this so what is an electromagnetic wave and what is the relationship of the power transfer from the one end to the another end and its relationship between electric and magnetic field so let's have a a brief uh, description of what is an electromagnetic radiation so in physics electromagnetic radiation refers to the wave of the electromagnetic field propagating through space it carrying electromagnetic radiation energy it includes radio waves the microwaves infrared of course visible light and ultraviolet x-ray and gamma rays so this picture debit an electromagnetic radiation propagating through the air so the blue the waveform is indi indicating the electric field so the red one is magnetic field both electric and magnetic field are they are in phase but they are orthogonal in nature so there exists a simple relationship between this is the source and this is as a receiving point this is the source and this is receiving point so the source is emitting the electromagnetic radiation and uh, there is a simple relationship between the rate of this energy transfer and the amplitude of electric and magnetic field intensities of electromagnetic field so h is the magnetic field intensity is a vector and e is electric field intensity so there exists so what is the the relationship between the e h and the rate of energy transfer from source to the receiving point of course definitely this is propagating through the the vacuum with the velocity of c c is the light velocity so john henry pointing Uh, he is an English professor, so he proposed a theorem for the conservation of energy of the electromagnetic field. So the theorem states that the vector product of electric field intensity E and magnetic field intensity H at any point is a measure of a rate of energy flow per unit area at that point. So here we can see three axes. x axis y axis and z axis the wave is propagating from the source to the the receiving side and the z axis represent the velocity of propagation and x axis represent the amplitude is of the uh, the electric field intensities uh, oscillating with respect to the x axis whereas this is uh, e and this one represent the b so electric field and magnetic field whereas b is oscillating with reference to the y axis but both these e and b are e and b are in phase and they are orthogonal and z axis rep represent the direction of propagation and uh, let's have a close look on the the propagation of electromagnetic wave in uh, the vacuum here we can see that the magnitude of uh, e and b both are swinging uh, on x and uh, on y axis here the representation is definitely slightly different from the what we have seen in the earlier pictures here uh, the wave is propagating along the y axis and uh, b and e both are oscillating with reference to x and z axis so axis may be what will be but the both uh, e and b are orthogonal in nature so this is a 
with a brief description about their uh, the characteristic of the magnetic field. So let's back to the pointing theorem. So pointing theorem states that the vector product of the vector product of electric field intensity E electric field intensity E and magnetic field intensity H it represent the rate of energy flow per unit area. The rate of energy flow is nothing but the P, the power. So this is the po the pointing here. So this is one of the very important theorems used in electromagnetic field theory. So the direction of P is perpendicular to E and H. So it is E, it's going to be H. So P is perpendicular to both E and H. Now we do the proof of this the pointing theorem. So the Maxwell equation states that this we derived in the, the previous module. So this was the Maxwell's the first equation. So, Jc is nothing but conduction current density. So, Jc we can represent as the divergent of H minus So, let us take um, Jc equal to J. So, So, Jc is um, conduction current density. Uh, now we multiply E on the both side. So, so this becomes E dot J. E dot minus epsilon e so what is e dot uh, e dot j so e dot j is e we can represent as volt per length and j is the current density current per area so the voltage in the current is the power divided by area into length you will get volume. So hence E dot J is power per unit volume. Now by using this identity theorem so using identity so this can be represented as h dot divergent of e minus e dot So from this expression, E dot the power of H is minus Uh, 
now let us take this as equation number one and this is equation number two so using identity theorem so we expanded this we expanded this expression and now we are going to substitute this one here sorry here now one become so one was the power per unit volume that is unit of j become h dot the curl of e minus the divergence of equals h minus epsilon e d e by d t so we already studied that the, the maxwell second law the maxwell second law states that del cos e is minus so del cos e is minus mu the partial derivative of the intensity the magnetic field event so let us take this equation number three now we are going to substitute this equation here. So E dot J become so mu is a constant, so minus mu, so H here, H dot partial derivative of minus we will take this expression here so minus epsilon e minus power window equals h now so what is the uh, x square partial derivative of x square? It is nothing but two h dot h dot. So that means h dot dot h by dot e is half of this function so half of the partial derivative of h square similarly this one e dot so this is half of e square Now we do the substitution of these expression in this equation. So the power per unit volume become minus mu by two x square minus sigma by two. E square minus del dot two plus h. So this is the expression of power per unit volume. What is the total power if you do the integration of this expression so this is 
this is the expression of power per unit volume now if you take the integration of this function with reference to the volume you will get the total power let us let us do the integration so so volume develop so you can um, the derivative function you can take it out so so this becomes Can do the integration of the function. The function is u by 2 x square plus epsilon by 2 e square. So, integrating with reference to the volume. Here again, we have the volume. So, divergent of p cross x. So, using a divergence theorem, we can rewrite this expression. So, di divergence theorem states that the surface integral of E cross H ds e is nothing but the volume integral of divergence of E cross H d. Thanks. This one again we become only in the value of the function u by two x square plus epsilon by two e square with reference to the volume minus this can represent as this. The surface integral of e cross h reference to the function. So this function represent so that the total the total power dissipated in a unit volume, and this one represent the electric the magnetic energy density. So joule per this function represents electric energy density in joule per meter, and this is density joule per meter cube. But we are integrating this function with reference to the volume, so we will get the total energy. So now we can conclude that the rate at which is stored energy in volume is decreasing as it propagates and this function represents the rate of flow of energy outward to the through the surface of volume. This function represents the power flow per unit volume, the P. So P is uh, another vector. And this is the, the pointing vector. So named after the scientist John Henry Pointing, who proposed this theory. Hence, this vector measures the rate of flow of energy of the wave as it propagates. This is the end of the first topic.